Right, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. We'll get underway with our Sunday sessions. And without further ado, I'll hand over to Richard. Thank you. John. Thank you. And, um, okay, I'll probably halfway through, um, I will ask if there are any questions, but at the moment I'm just starting to introduce the, the sort of approach I have to uh, aerial photography. Um, just that since I arrived in Australia in 1951, and the difference between Holland and Australia is of course immense that you can appreciate. So it's, first of all, the moment you arrive here, it's very intriguing, and then if you have an inclination like I had, you then try to explore more and more of the landscape. Um, in my time, the camera reached a certain degree of perfection between the 50s and 60s, also, the advent of color film was perfected and then combined with the availability of aeroplanes, in particular the, the ones suitable for aerial photography, also happened. And these were mainly the Cessnas, high wing, clear windows, and um, they were sort of uh, most suitable for aerial photography. So it all came together and it was very fortunate in my uh, life that I was able to take that opportunity. And so it, um, the timing was very good at that. I also, in the beginning, saw some of the landscape as a painting contractor for McRobertson Miller Airlines, very long, long ago. And we, um, uh, I went to Derby, went to Broome, various places. And so I became acquainted with the landscape and admired it for its fastness and for its diversity, particularly already then from the air. I, I, it was not later, say after four or five years that I went back to Holland, that I actually bought my first camera and became aware of photography. Before that I did a bit of landscape painting as well and uh, uh, various other drawing and so on. But it, I accidentally discovered a camera and I thought it is quite an, an, a creative tool. It's no different from a pencil or a brush. It is, uh, you still got to work out beforehand what you really want to uh, portray with either a pen or a pencil or a camera. You've got to have a little bit of a theme or you've got to get acquainted with the possibilities of the tools that you gradually um, uh, use. So, <coughs> I also had um, the fortune that I did a little bit of work, or quite a bit of work, for Hemsley Island, and they asked me to go up north and document the first development of the railway, the port, and all that uh, facility that was taking place. Uh, I became very much aware that with Australia, that if you drive along the road, that if you come to a certain point that is an attraction, whether it's there's rock or whatever, that everybody sees that from the same position as you drive around the corner. Not having many roads and being a freedom of the bird, the plane, you would now have access suddenly to a landscape that you would not possibly see any other way. So it became more and more logical for me to um, to use that point of view. It's not always um, easy to get a plane, and I have a friend, um, Danny D, and his wife, Penny, and we traveled a lot together because they said, okay, we've got a plane, what are we doing with it? So we, uh, we went around and uh, I thought, I said, it would be nice to go along here, along there, and all that. Uh, nowadays you can Google the coastline, or you can Google so many things. But the funny thing is that it's still the personal sort of um, uh, point of view that at the moment it really, there is a photographer called George Gaston, who's a Swiss photographer, who did one of the first books from the air called A Flight of Discovery. And I think that's what it always is because you never know exactly what you're going to see because there are uh, Conditions, seasonal differences, early morning, midday, evening, 
all the conditions are always slightly different. Then in flying, you never get in exactly the same position. And if you do uh, fly over an area, then you can probably, uh, next time uh, you've documented that, you might fly, say, a thousand meters higher. That gives you another point of view. You take in more of the landscape and the formwork along the coast and all that takes a different shape. Australia has about uh, roughly with the inlets and all that 20,000 kilometers of coastline and that is quite a lot which you can explore and I haven't seen all of it but I've seen a lot of it which uh, Jan in this plane, I went to Australia twice um, I think that um, every time you pick up something new that you missed last time, as well as the climatic conditions, the daytime conditions, etc., you also, over the years, you change your own attitude by reading more about interpretations of landscape. You take that on board and you get a slightly uh, different point of view as you grow through life, I think. Anyway, uh, it, I find now that uh, there is no limit to, um, to one's ability to uh, uh, be more and more creative or to refine the creative process. I think that's, that's probably what I would like to say more than mention. Uh, I uh, <coughs> use also all of this work Nearly all of it is still film. There are about three or four pictures with a digital camera. So now we have this transition film versus digital. But it doesn't matter what you use. If you don't see it, you don't get it. So it's not, <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's not terribly important. 